The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent and wonderful and exciting Power Trading Hour. Got a lot of stuff going on in front of a three-day weekend. Uh, as we said in the update, uh, a lot of moving pieces out here. And, of course, we always come to you at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what's going on? Well, we started the morning out really with the price or, uh, producer price index slamming the market lower. Uh, it rose seven-tenths of a percent, which was fairly hot. Uh, that was then uh, dumped on by, I think, the Cleveland, is that right? Cleveland Fed president who said that she was uh, looking for uh, a half point uh, rate hike in the next one, which kind of uh, pushes back the uh, narrative that we were going to skip a couple uh, going through the summer. Um, and, of course, uh, bigger issues with uh, credit card debt. Um, the biggest jump in 10 years, which tells you uh, quite a lot about uh, what the market's uh, looking at. So will the Fed buckle or will they keep rates higher? Uh, when we look at some of the charts, um, the big thing would be, uh, you know, where governments always meddling in the economy in one way or the other. Uh, doesn't matter much. Uh, but uh, the one thing that uh, I've been looking for uh, has been that the government generally, uh, why it can move the uh, bond market around in the short term, um, there isn't anybody bigger than the bond market. There isn't a government bigger than the bond market. Bond market is 10 times bigger than the equity market. So what do we have? Well, we've been talking about coming back around to this 101 area on the TLT. I never bought the uh, bovine uh, effluence uh, that uh, interest rates were going lower anytime soon. Uh, we're down to 101.66 uh, for the low today as we start hitting these gaps. And those gaps go back uh, from the 3rd of January when we came back from trading. And I never really understood the whole idea. But, you know, if you're going to try to run a market and create a narrative, and a narrative is something that goes beyond facts, logic, and uh, human understanding uh, to try to make a story, to make other people believe something that isn't true, uh, we're really kind of back here now. Uh, the stock market, though, just saying that we're going to, we're going to breeze past it. Don't don't listen to it. Don't look at uh, what's going on. Uh, who are you going to believe me, you or your lying eyes? Well, I think we've gotten to the point now where uh, it's a, the, the uh, <clears throat> equity markets are a little bit uh, unhooked uh, for a variety of reasons, mostly because huge shorting in a number of stocks, whether it's the king of all shorts with Tesla, uh, which I think when I looked last uh, minute was still up a little bit after being a little bit lower. Um, if you short something 40% a day, it's going to be hard to ever see this thing go lower. We did hit, hit a new high, uh, 217.65, uh, although they're having a uh, recall doesn't really seem to be putting uh, the hurt on Tesla that bad. Uh, but you know, we've got a handful of stocks, probably 20 or 30 of them. Um, and a lot of these are stocks with big names. Um, now, you don't have uh, really any kind of volume in these things, uh, but people won't quit shorting them. And since they won't quit shorting them, they're just slowly ticking up, ratcheting higher out here. And that ratchet just means that eventually someone's going to quit shorting. And these things are going to quit going up. 
Now, going into a three-day weekend, a lot of times the character, if not uh, even the direction, changes in this market. But we're looking, uh, if you just look at the charts, at some scary numbers. Uh, I would say Apple, pretty much the, uh, you know, within about a buck of the previous highs today, uh, and that had 154 million. Today we got about 36 million. Now, can they go up and, and tell people quit shorting? It can, but uh, volume is poor. Let's just say it. Been poor for a few t two days, but there has been kind of a big change. And uh, I talked about it in my newsletter this morning. That change uh, was uh, from the uh, big caps to the small caps. Now, what I wanted to point out here was uh, the dark pool numbers started to rise yesterday. But we may still be a little bit early. Wait for it. Wait for it. But the big thing out here was the volume was about the same as the day before. But we were about 40. Uh, what is that? A million? Billion? Trillion? What is this? Uh, that would be thousands, millions. Okay. Where the uh, total market dollar spent uh, was about uh, $40 billion lighter. But the volume was about the same. What does that tell you? That tells you that many of the stocks that were traded out yesterday uh, and a lot of the people that are involved in small dollar stocks were getting out yesterday. So we're probably getting close uh, to a do or die in the market. Many of the people with the more uh, challenged stocks that are stocks that uh, are lower, that would uh, not probably do well in higher interest rates, uh, people are starting to andalay, amscray out of those stocks. So a lot of stuff going on. Um, Docu had, er, uh, had uh, news with uh, layoffs. Um, a lot of people are looking at anything to cut costs and uh, – We'll find the uh, equity markets rewarding them in the short term on that. Um, in ahead of a lot of uh, what is going to be painful, uh, let's uh, talk about painful, extremely painful House uh, committee um, inquiries into uh, uh, a lot of these companies. We find that uh, Wojcicki, which is which is uh, one of the uh, three founders of Google, who's been around forever. She ran YouTube for 15, 10 years, 15, uh, became the head of Google and YouTube uh, just recently, uh, will be leaving. And, of course, uh, the original uh, other two founders have come back just in the last couple of weeks um, when they've found out that, you know what, everybody had a lot of chat GDP but they didn't have much of anything uh, to compete against it, mostly because she was uh, too uh, focused on uh, doing bad things at YouTube and Google, which uh, we'll find in uh, testimony fairly soon. And, of course, probably enough to push them uh, or change uh, Section 230 uh, support in the coming uh, Supreme Court battles that uh, start in about a month. Uh, hang on for uh, Tim Ord. We'll be back in a minute. 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. trying to get the calls worked out with Tim Ord. We'll have him on in a second. Uh, wanted to look at, at uh, some of these other stocks mostly. Let's see if I've got it here. Um, probably the big news after the bell tonight is uh, AMAT. And, you know, we've had a, a pretty good amount of energy off the lows going back to October 13th and up to the December 13th high. We pulled back wasn't a lot of energy. The problem is that we haven't had a uh, lot of energy from that low on December 28th up to the February 2nd high. We're back to uh, about that December 13th high, which was the last major high. Anyway, I think it's at like 405, 415 applied materials. Um, and uh, we'll find a, lot, a little bit more about the semis, uh, which... You know, with uh, Taiwan Semiconductor having its massive pullback, kind of interesting sideways action. Uh, we will now go back to Tim Ord, see if I can find my little slide for him here. And, of course, uh, Tim Ord has been writing newsletters for, what, over 30 years. Been a award winner in multiple different sections, including gold and the equities. Probably other things that I've forgotten. Maybe things he's forgotten. But, yeah, you do it long enough, you're going to forget something. And I forget just about everything. But I don't forget Tim. Tim right. at the or-oracle.com. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me on again. So we got a snowstorm going on, in, on here in Lincoln, Nebraska. So, um, But anyhow, uh, I sent you uh, four charts. Uh, did you get them? Yeah, hang on just a second. I got to turn my air conditioning down. I can hardly hear you. <laughs> turn the heat okay. up here. Okay. Uh, it never gets old for me down here in Florida. So anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Let's take a look. All right. Well, actually, the first chart is the uh, NYSE summation index, and over the years, this chart goes back to. Uh, uh, it looks like 2006. You can go back further, but, you know, it kind of just repeats itself. But 
usually there's a selling climax in this uh, in the uh, summation index when you get a reading below minus 700. Uh, it can go lower, but that's usually an indication the market's getting to a point where it's getting washed out. So when it gets 700 or below, then uh, to really confirm a bottom, the market needs to show a, shine, a sign of strength right after that a selling climax, a reading below minus 700. So you need to rally back up to plus 1,000. And I circled uh, the, the red line or the blue lines are when the uh, the summation index did get below minus 700. And the red lines on that chart show when the uh, summation de- index got a, above plus 1,000. And pretty much the same story uh, all along uh, the 2000. Nine low, uh, you got a blue line, then a month or two or three later, you got a sign of strength, and same with the uh, 2000, uh, it looks like about 2011 decline, you had a 2006 decline, 2019 decline, you know, a climax, then a sign of strength, and that March of 2020, you had a selling climax and summation index, and it'd get above plus uh, 1,000 a month or two, later and we did have a a reading below minus 700 in october and we just had a sign of strength that completed uh first part of uh i think it was in uh early january um i have to go back and look but anyhow it's either january or first of february we had a reading above plus 1000 so that bodes well for intermediate term or summation index summation index uh is basically a um, kind of an advanced decline line type indicator uh, measures uh, advancing issues, declining issues, and so you want a, a selling climax where everybody, you know, the weak hands dump dump all their stock, and you want the strong hands to come in. That's to confirm the bottom's in. So this has a pretty good track record going forward, and does suggest the October low was a significant low, and um, so we really haven't worked too much out of that low yet. We're still inside with kind of a consolidation pattern, but we're making headway as we're going forward. But I predict because of, of this minus 700 to plus 1,000 in summation index that we'll have a up year, probably a, uh, a double digit up year this year uh, because of that indicator. There's some actually other indicators here, but this is the one I kind of use that has a good track record in the past. If you look down at the bottom window, which is the NYC McCollin oscillator, and the McCollin oscillator is a, is a more of a shorter term type indicator as far as advanced decline is concerned. But it kind of works the same way. You, you get a climatic bottom, usually below minus 400. We had that in October. Then you get a sign of strength above plus 300. And we had a bunch of them in late 2000. Uh, 22 and early 2023 and if you look back previously when that happened you usually get you know two or three times um where you get plus 300 ranges well the more you get the more i guess finds the strength you get and over the last several years uh this this is one of the biggest signs of strength we had uh if you compare them going back to 2006 so i think you know, can we break the new highs on this rally? Maybe, you know, if we even get back to the old highs, you know, that's at least a 10% move right there. Um, you know, my prediction, we'll at least get back to the old highs. Will we break the new highs of last year? I don't know, but uh, I don't have a fortune teller, but this, at this point on, this year it should be a decent year. So we'll kind of wait and see because normally when they expand the money supply, which they have, uh, as far as uh, the Biden administration is concerned, you know, he pumped in another what seventeen trillion into whatever. And that's usually good for the market. So if you if you take money away from the market and restrict money, uh, you know, printing money, then that's bearish for the market. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm thinking just because he, he, he expanded the money supply, I think is probably some of it's finding into the market. So. That's that's my conclusion. Why this market may go up because the money supply is is huge. So we got inflation going with it, but you got a lot of money floating around, and a lot of that money is going to find its way into the market. So 
Anyhow, I'm bullish for this year. I got a question for you, or we got a a, a a email question for you, and maybe you can take a look at it during the break and uh, email me the chart back either in the next segment or the one after it. Uh, but they want to look at uh, XOM, Exxon Mobil. XOM is the symbol on it. Can we take so a look when at we that come back, time? I don't know. Anyway, uh, okay. we'll look at that after you come back from the break. The other thing I want to get to you and think about is, uh, from what I've seen, it looks like the summation index has been tailing down the last five or seven days as we've continued tried to push up. And I wanted to see what you thought of that. We'll be back in just a minute with Tim Ord of the Ord Dash Oracle. Dot. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, uh do have uh, a caller on the line for us, Tim. So we're going to go to Dave from Framingham. He wants to talk about Hi. GDX. Uh, how you doing today, Dave? And uh, Hi, what's how your are you? question? How are you, uh, Tim? How are you? Uh, good, good. Doing fine. Thank you. Good. Can you make a comment on GDX if we hit the bottom here and where we're going here on, G on GDX? Well, actually, we got a chart. Uh, we can talk about it a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. Which chart is that? Yeah. Uh, chart number four. Okay. Good enough? All right. Uh, there's a trend line. There's a blue trend line there. I got support on it. It was, it was around 29. And um, what we did back in, looks like about June, June period, May, June period, 
We broke below, below 29, stayed below 29, and he went back up to that 29 first part of the of last year or, or late last year at around 29. And it should have, if it was in a very situation, it should have fell back below that or kept below that line and worked back down. Since it closed above it, it's called a shakeout. And that implies if Mark can't hold previous low, it'll eventually try to take out the previous high. And that trend line goes back to 2016. Uh, I have this trend line, I got it drawn back to, uh, looks like about 2019, but it goes a lot further back than that. And we closed above it. So, you know, so we then we went above the previous high of, um, looks like about May there. And we broke above that previous high in May on higher volume. So if you go above a previous high on higher volume, that turns it, flips the trend to up. Also, we had a bullish shakeout, which implies we're going to, at some point, we're going to try, uh, attack the old highs. And we did pull back, back to 29. We're actually there right now. Uh, and I am I implying that this is probably the right shoulder for me right now of a head and shoulders bottom, where the head is the October low and the left shoulder is the, uh, looks like about the May low. And so this thing, whole thing that's been going on since May is a head and shoulders bottom. And we're finding support right, right around this 29 area. And what I'm telling my customers, this is probably a good place to buy now for an upside target back up to the previous highs. And that's how I'm reading the market. If it was, if to really, um, you know, this is on the, 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 the um, Oh, shorter time frame. I have some longer term time frames too, but uh, what's going on right now, we're probably looking at support right at this number right now. Uh, I guess it could be a couple of days off, but in this vicinity right around the 29, this is probably going to be the right shoulder here. And if you do the calculations of this head and shoulders bottom, it has an upside target around 43, which is basically back to the previous highs. So um, I think we're still early in the stages. And we do get back to the previous highs. And if you look back, you know, really haven't done anything uh, since the uh, 2020 high. We're pretty much kind of moved sideways here besides the shakeout. We broke below the previous lows. And I'm thinking we're, we're getting ready for an impulse wave. And actually, I think the impulse wave really has started from the October low. And, you know, you'll have some pullbacks along the way. But I think from, from the October low, we'll keep making higher highs and higher lows as we go forward. So I'm thinking we're, we're going to break out of this side of this trading range. The market is due for an impulse wave uh, because it can't trade sideways forever. And so I think the impulse wave has started from the October low. So that's how I'm seeing it. I do think that we will hit the previous highs up around that 42, but I don't think that will stop the market. We may hesitate there and possibly have a consolidation, but I actually think we'll break above that level also. Uh, Tim, I don't have a gold think? chart uh, yeah. in front of me, but um, that gold chart, uh, I think it had a, a 2,000 upside target of a head and shoulders bottom, too. So, But, anyhow, yeah, I'm bullish. Uh, I think this short-term consolidation or this pullback we had from, what, 34 to 29 is pretty much done, and now we're start, we should start another uh, leg up. Dave, you did you have a follow-up? Yeah, do you see the next target, uh, like, what's, what would the next target be from here, from 29, say? Uh, probably the previous high is up around 42. Oh, oh, there's nothing like around 36? You don't see 34 or something like that first? Well, no, I'm thinking we're, you know, since we did this last high, we had around 34. Tested the previous high of that May high. We had a bump up there in May high. I think that's the neckline of the head and shoulders bottom, and we have a sign of strength through that 34 area. Okay. Because that's what you got to have to get yeah. to confirm a head and shoulders bottom. So a 34 area, there's a trend line there, and I don't think we're going to stop there. I think we're going to just probably shoot right through it. The reason why there's a lot of symmetry in, in head and shoulders pattern, if we stopped there, it came back down, and obviously that wouldn't be a head and shoulders pattern. But since we had a shakeout, and a shakeout, if you break, if you have a, a breakout to the downside that fails, 
normally you break out to the upside. So that's another reason yeah. why we'll get back to 42. Yeah. Do you, how long would that take about, would you think, Tim? Um, you know, it's it's probably end of year. Oh, you know, it's just, short term. It's a, how about short term? What do we have for short term? That's what I was wondering. Well, I think there's a low right here, right now. Right. Um, but I think we'll get back to 42. It's hard to say time-wise. You know, I guess you can do a channeling thing, and I can all, you know, that would probably put it up in in uh, August, probably 42. Seems like August, July, August, the gold market yeah. always seems to do weird stuff right around that time. If you're going up into it, it's usually a, some sort of a high. If you're going down into it, a lot of times it's a low. So probably July it would be a, a, a cycle type thing. No, um, yeah. You know, if we're going up into that time from here at 42 in July, I'd say that's yeah, probably some sort of a high three months consolidation. Like 34 area again once more here in the short term. Do you see the 34 hitting up here at all? Yeah, yeah. It could be that. Shortly. Yeah, I think we're hitting low right now from okay. my work. So, okay. Yeah, thank, 34 is thank previous you very highs. Much. So. You bet. Thanks for the thank call, you Dave. Um, I do have, well, is that the GDX? I do have the uh, XOM chart up, and we've got about a minute before our break, so we may go through into the next segment. But uh, I do have that up and the questions on it. So go ahead on to that, Tim. Well, I, I tell you, I kind of looked at the short term, and, and really you got to just look at the big term. You know, this is, you know, a heck of an impulse wave going on from the 2000 you know, 20 low, you know, we've virtually just gone straight up. And I, I, I did a our rate of change. And, uh, you know, a lot of times you get these rate of change real quick and you come right back down. Well, this rate of change has been staying up around 75 for the last two years. <laughs> so, um, you know, according you know, and if you look, at the RSI, you know, this is a monthly chart. So if you look at the RSI, we had something similar back in 2000, or, or uh, it'd be 1984. Uh, you know, the RSI stayed up there for a couple of years, and we may have the same thing. I don't know. I don't see a top of this market yet. So, okay. We'll be I, back in just a minute. If you want uh, Tim's charts, email me at path at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. we come back i still have the xom chart up did you have anything more with that yeah, well it's um uh, i was just trying to look at the bigger picture um i mean there's there is there's no buying climax yet because actually volumes dropped off a little bit that may mean a consolidation over the last you know three four months here we the, the volume has dropped off and we hit newer higher highs but you know, this I don't see any re a reason to to be short this stock or anything. If you look back at the nineteen, you know, uh, or two thousand four, you know, to two thousand eight, that time frame, you know, the RSI got up around seventy or better and just stayed there. And we're kind of like in a similar situation right now. Um, I looked at the rate of change too, and it's not giving me any clues. Um, you know, it's hard, you know, can it go higher? I, I guess there's there's no topping pattern starting to form here. At least I don't see one yet. So trend is up, but, you know, high is high. I don't know because you're breaking all-time highs now. So it's hard to to say how high this thing could go. But, um, you know, it's, I don't know. Wouldn't be okay. short. So, I, you know, right now I guess I have to say higher highs, so. No Let's, go to the next it, chart, really. Let's go to okay. the next chart. Let's go to the next chart. Right. Uh, chart two. That's fine. Or uh, we got time. Well, we we can kind of cut to the chase. This chart two is kind of a a brain teaser. I can go through the reasons why uh, I think we're going to move higher, or we can just jump to chart three and. Doing more of a uh, in a nutshell type thing. Your okay, choice. let's go to three. You got about six minutes left. All right. That this this is a weekly chart, and um, you know you hit the October low. Market rallied up into a, a de December high. You had a fifty percent retracement down into the uh, late December, and so that that gives you credit. That this could be an ABC up, and and back in the uh, December high, you broke above the previous high of September on higher volume. So that implies that December high at some point is going to be tested, which it did, and we're testing it right now. And since we're not normally you go up a test, if that hit that previous high on lighter volume, you back away. If you notice, we've been staying up here for three weeks now. This is the third week uh, we're at these previous highs of that around that 410 area. So we're, if we're not backing away, we're eating through the supply and going up to the next higher high, which is probably the August high, which is up around 430. So that's uh, a shorter version of what's going on here. So um, we've been kind of bullish here, and, and even though the market has flipped sideways for three weeks, my opinion, we're eating through uh, the previous highs, billing cause to rally up to the next higher high at 430. Uh, and from there, you know, 
depends how that high is tested, may go down, may go up to the next higher high, which is a 450 range, which is the April high. So, um, anyhow, I, I'm bullish. Um, we're long. And so I think at a minimum, we're going to test the August high. Okay. So, what was the, what was a little bit, uh, what's this, uh, what looks like a Custer's last stand in uh, two. But so we got about four minutes left. Let's go a little <laughs> okay, bit more okay. in depth. So this, this is brain numbing stuff that I do. And anyhow, I look at the, uh, I do a lot of uh, uh, volume type studies. And I do a lot of stuff with ticks and trend. You get a tick uh, trend over 1.3, that's usually a bullish sign. If you get a tick over 150, that's also a bullish sign. If you get them forming within a day of each other, usually you're forming a short-term low within two days. And that's the reason why I got the ticks and trend readings there pointed out in those days. And I don't have the dates on here, but I did a signal that we had a bullish engulfing pattern, that big white pattern, that big white candlestick pattern in the middle of the chart there. That's a bullish engulfing pattern engulfed the last two days. We didn't go up. We went back down again. Tested the bullish engulfing pattern uh, two days later on lighter volume, uh, that means support. Next day, it tried to go down below that low. It couldn't because volume dropped out again. So that's another it, testing a previous low on lighter volume. And over the last couple of days, we've gone up. Uh, yesterday, or two days ago, today's Thursday, so it'll be Tuesday, we had a kind of a, a big volume day. Well, today we tested the low of that big volume day on lighter volume. So now we're kind of rallying. Uh, so I think this whole pattern that's been going on since the first part of February is probably a, will turn out to be a head and shoulders bottom where the uh, previous low of last week's ahead and we're screwing around with the right shoulder right now. Uh, so the internals, the volume studies and, and the tick studies and the RSI, or not the RSI, but the uh, trend studies are all kind of lean bullish here uh, along with the volume studies. So I'm thinking... Uh, this is all base building. We're also, you know, uh, doing all this at the previous highs. So I'm thinking we're going to 430, you know, not this week, you know, maybe possibly next week or the week after is how I'm, I'm doing it. So we're long here. So I still think we have further to go. So I think 430, you, that's the reason why I can't bend up to the August highs. I think we're going there. What do you think about going up uh, with light volume into a three-day weekend? That's not usually a good sign, but, you know, we tried to go down here tomorrow. Um, it's probably, uh, you know, we're trying to go up today. Tomorrow's going to probably even lighter volume than than uh, today's volume. But, uh, yeah, if we hit a new high above uh, Tuesday's high on, on lighter volume, uh, that would tell me that we're probably, that would be a kind of a bearish sign. And that would be the first very sign I had in a, in a couple of weeks. The key is, will we get back to that Tuesday high tomorrow? And I preferably we don't do it. We kind of just hang in there and not really do anything. So we'll have to wait and see what happens tomorrow. But, um, you know, everybody's starting to take off for three-day vacation because today's volume probably be higher than yesterday's volume, but lighter than the day before. So, um, but, you know, the, the, the real weird thing is the dollar amount traded uh, the last two days? The the uh, volume was about the same, but the dollar amount was uh, about ten or fifteen percent lighter, which generally tells me that uh, most of the activity are in real cheap or penny stocks, that kind of stuff. So I'm not exactly sure what that means when we get up here and everybody's kind of bailing on the uh, small caps. Everybody's kind of going and crowding into uh, highly short. Uh, big cap names at the moment and generally I don't like to go short when everybody else is going short so we kind of pushed ourselves up into that but uh, yeah, I'll give you the last 15 seconds here oh, Go ahead uh, well, anyhow, the, 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 the studies I've done like again for the ticks and trend and actually volume studies along with counts of charting uh, so far over the last two weeks that leans bullish so I'm long Okay I appreciate it, Tim. We'll have you on in another right. couple of weeks. Tim or to the or-oracle.com. If you want his charts, email me at path at tfnn.com, and I'll send it 
uh, send uh, you them. And uh, thanks again, Tim. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Well, as we get to wrap up the show today, got a little bit of earnings uh, going into a long weekend. I have a lot of conflicting um, items. Uh, we have options that point very much lower. We have a handful of stocks in the uh, most uh, leveraged to the indexes that are uh, highly short. Stocks like Apple, uh, Tesla, not so much, but uh, same kind of thing. We've got a handful of these stocks, and for whatever reason, people can't quit shorting them. They pile on. Tesla again, 40% yesterday. Now, that's the thin run numbers. You don't know how many of those people covered before the end of the day. But every day, they're trying to catch a high, and generally, you just ratchet up until those folks give up. Now, of course, as we said, tomorrow, three-day weekend coming. We've got options expiration. My guess is we have a lot of volume at the very beginning of the day and then kind of tail off. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday when we come back are options rollovers and uh, over day. So we're really probably not going to get going much until like next Thursday. We'd have to have a lot uh, or a big event after the weekend. But, uh, you know, you get these three-day weekends and not as much as the summertime. 
But the character, if not the direction, tends to change. We were banging out at these highs, and a lot of times when you hang out at highs, you at least try to break through them a little bit. Uh, the big problem I have is everywhere I see is distribution. So the whole idea is that can you make higher highs at the same time that most of the big guys are selling a lot of other stocks? And for this week, it's been the uh, a big move to get rid of anything that's uh, not a big cap stock and that might have issues with higher interest rates coming. So could we have higher uh, indexes and the more or majority of stocks sell off? We could. Sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems